Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'll be going over backing up and restoring uptime Kuma. This is an important thing because if you rely on uptime Kuma to check uh, what's up and what's down in your home automation setup, uh, you can easily back up and restore it. And if you do any updates to uptime Kuma or you do any changes, uh, add statuses that you don't want to add or anything or want to go back in time, you can easily do that with the utility that I made. So um, so this series is about starting a smart home from scratch. So I'm gonna be going over installing software to uh, get into the home automations and everything like that. So if you like that, subscribe, comment, like, and let's get started backing up and restoring Uptown Kuma. So I'm gonna go over uh, what the backup.sh does and what every line does and try to explain it to you. Um, so we're gonna set the bin to uh, the sh up here. So we're, we're gonna set a file prefix for the backup.zips files that will be stored over here. And then directory to store the backups in, we're gonna uh, set a variable for the backup directory so right now i have it set up in the backups and then i'm going to scroll down so file name right here so we're going to set the file name uh variable right here then we're going to put the file prefix on it and then we're going to set a date and time and then we're going to set the extension as zip so file to store the SSH IP address. So this is to where you're going to store the IP address that you use. So you don't have to enter the IP address every time you run this command. And then file to store the SSH password. So um, you're going to store the SSH password in this file once it's generated. And it'll make it to where you don't have to enter the password every time. Since this is local only, it's not a normally big deal um so check if the ssh ip file exists so if the if the ip file exists then um we're going to pat out the ip file then we're going to set it in on the ip address variable okay prompt for ssh ip so we're going to prompt for the ssh ip if the file ip the IP file up here doesn't exist. We're going to prompt for it down here. So we're going to say enter SSH IP. Then it's going to store it on the IP address variable. So then we're going to go down here and we're going to cache the IP in the IP file. So we're going to go out the IP. Then we're going to send it to the IP file and it's going to be created over here. Okay. So we're going to set the, the SSH uh, server details on the SSH server variable. We're going to set it as root for the user. Then we're at IP address. So whichever this one uh, goes to, it's going to set it to here. So check if the password file exists. So we're now going to check if the SSH password exists in a file. So we're going to set the variable if it does exist, and then we're going to cut it out, and we're going to get the password and put it on the SSH password variable. So if the password does not exist, we're going to do an else statement. So prompt for SSH password. So we're going to prompt for the SSH password, and then we're going to store it inside of the SSH password once the user enters it. Then save the password to the file. So we're going to save the SSH password, the one that user entered right here. We're going to save it in the password file, uh, the SSH password.txt right here. We're going to save it in there. It's going to be created over he he here and then cached uh, for, for later use. So sync the data directory. So we're going to use SSH pass, and you will have to install that on your computer. Depending on what operating system you do, you can use Brew for Mac. You can use AppKit for Linux. So we're going to rsync. Then we're going to um, uh, sync. We're going to take the SSH server right here. We're going to put it in here. Then we're going to go into OPT and then Uptime, Puma, and then Data. 
Then we're going to get this, all this stuff right here, all these con uh, content in the data directory. We're going to save it to the local right here. Then we're going to zip up the data directory that we saved up here. We're going to zip it up and we're going to use the file name up here. Then check if the directory exists. So we're going to check if the backup directory exists on the local side. So if the destination directory exists, we're, we're going to move the files. We're going to continue down the line. But if it doesn't exist, we're going to have to make the directory. So the backup directory variable is up here. So we're going to have to make that backup directory if it doesn't exist. Then we're going to set a timeout duration of 300 seconds. So we're going to move the file, start the timeout countdown, and then we're going to do a while loop. And then we're going to check if this file, uh, if the backup.zip file exists yet. And if it does exist, then we're going to move that file to the backup directory or right here. And then we're going to do some cleanup. So we're going to remove the data directory that, that we had right here. Okay. So we're going to explain the, what the restore to SSH does. So we're going to set the bin as the SH. We're going to, um, set the local directory where the file is located. So we're going to set the backup directory as backups right here because that's the local backup directory that we have in the backup.sh then remote directory where the files will be copied so we're going to set the opt up time kuma and then data directory that's on your actual proxmox side so file to store the ssh ip address so we're going to set the file uh name that, that we set over here in backup.sh we're going to set that on the ip file uh, variable then we're going to start a password file variable. We're going to put SSH password.txt in there. The same thing you would have in the backup.sh. We're going to check if the, uh, the SSH IP file exists. If it does exist, then we're going to get the file contents of the IP file by cat. And then we're going to store it on the IP address variable. So. If the IP file does not exist, then we're going to do else statement. Then we're going to prompt for the user to put in the enter SSH IP address. Then we're going to put it on the IP address variable. Then we're going to save the, uh, the, the IP to the file. So we're going to echo out the IP address. Then we're going to send it to the IP file that, uh, the variable up here the ssh ip.txt up there so we're going to have to set the ssh server details variable so ssh server then we're going to set the user's root then we're going to set the ip address that either came from the if or the else so then we're going to check if the password file exists if the password file does exist then we're going to set the ssh password variable we're going to get the contents by cat then we're going to uh, to set the uh, password file name. So if the password file does not exist on the file system over here, we're going to prompt for the safe password. We're going to read it we're, uh, by saying to the user, you have to enter the SSH password right here. So we're going to uh, save it to the SSH password variable right here. Then once that's done, we're going to cache it to the SSH password uh, file right here. So now we're going to do some cleanup just to make sure everything's clean on the file system before we start doing this. So we're going to delete the uptime tumor restore directory. If it exists, we're going to just uh, delete it and make sure it don't exist. We're going to prompt the user to select a backup file. So we're going to uh, get the backup files by going into local directory over here. I get a list of them. We're going to do the ls command and we're going to order by the newest first. 
So we're going to check if any backup file exists, if it does exist, uh, if it doesn't exist, I mean. So we'll say to the user, no backup files found in the directory. Then we'll exit the um, a command. So if the backup files do exist, then we're going to show a list of the backup files. We're going to tell the user to enter the uh, the numbers that it gives you on the command up, up here. Um, so if the um, so we're going to uh, uh, do a select on the backup files, then we're going to um, say invalid selection if it's invalid or and the number doesn't exist. Or you'll say to the user that you select the backup file. Then we're going to get the backup file name. So if you do this, you're going to get the directory of the backups right here. And we don't want that for certain things. So we're going to get the backup file name by doing base name right here. Then we're going to go to the backup file. We're going to strip the directory on that backup file. And we're going to name it backup file name in the variable. So. Copy file from backups to the current directory. So we're going to copy the backup file that is up here that these are selected. We're going to copy it to the root right here. Then once we copy it, we're going to have to unzip it. So we're going to unzip the, the backup file inside of Uptime Kuma Restore. So once that's done, we're going to delete the uh, data directory if it exists. We're going to go to the, um, or uh, you're going to have to put, uh, you're going to have to install on your operating system the SSH pass. Um, so now we're going to SSH into the server. We're going to make sure the server does not have the data directory at time Kuma, just to clean it out, make sure it's fresh and ready to. And then we're going to rsync the latest file to the, the SSH server. And then, um, so we're going to rsync it. Then we're going to take the uptime Kuma restore data. Then we're going to hide a slash right here to make sure all the contents inside of the data directory get put inside of the remote directory right here. It's up here. So. We're going to set the remissions and we're going to remove uh, the remote directory. I'm going to remove that. Okay. And restart the service. Okay. Now we're going to SSH into the server. We're going to set the user and the group as root on the remote directory, make sure all the permissions are right. Then we're going to feed into the remote directory and then we're going to um, run service uptime Kuma restart. So we're going to restart the service right there. So we're going to remove the uptime Kuma restore directory inside of here. We're going to remove it. We're going to clean up now because the service should be coming back up. Then we're going to remove the zip file. We're going to clean up the zip file that we got. Uh, we, we got the, the base file name right here. So we're going to clean that off over here. So that is how the restore to SSH works. So I'm going to show you how the break SSH works. This is to where I'm going to break the install just for testing wise. And um, so I'm going to go over to break. And then I'm going to set the bin as the SH. Then I'm going to file to store the SH uh, IP address. So I'm going to set the IP file um, to sship.txt. And then we're going to set the file um, store the SSH password. We're going to set that in the .txt. We're going to check if the SSH uh, IP file exists. If it does exist, we're going to cut it out to the IP address. Then if it doesn't exist up here, we're going to prompt for the user to put in the SSH IP. Um, 
Then we're going to um, send the contents of what we got from the user to the IP file right here. And then SSH server details, we're going to set the SSH server variable right here. We're going to set the root to user. Then we're going to set the IP address that the user entered up here. Check if the password file exists. We're going to check if the SSH pa password file is on the uh, right here. We're going to check if it's on there. We're going to cut it out if it is. Then we're going to set the SSH password variable. Then if it doesn't exist, we're going to prompt for the user to enter it. We're going to set it on the SSH password variable. We're going to take the SSH pa password variable. We're going to send the contents to the password file and save it on the disk. Then we're going to um, do SSH pass. We're going to send the SSH password that we got from the user uh, to the server. Then we're going to log into it. Then SSH ser server right here. Then we're going to remove the data directory for Uptime Kuma. And then we're finally going to uh, restart the service for Uptime Kuma. Then that's going to break the install and make it to where I can easily test it back and forth on, on restoring and backing up. Okay, so I have my terminal on the left and my Uptime Kuma installation on the right. And you can see I have one monitor on on this backup. So I'm going to go and um, restore this. So I'm going to uh, go restore. I'm going to put in the SSH IP address. And we're going to put in the password. Then we're going to see the available backup files right here. I'm going to say three. Then once this service restarts and the restore goes through, you'll see it over here. And it is restored. So now I'm going to do two and you can see it's going to be changing. So now that two backup, it had Proxmox in there to, uh, to restore that one. So you can see that the restore is working really well. So we're going to um, just put in another monitor. We're going to just do GitHub. Okay, you can see GitHub's up. I'm going to go over here, do backup. And it backed it up. And so now I'm going to um, restore it. So I'm going to restore the two one. So it should be it. Okay. You can see it went back all the way to Big Bear Tech World right here. Now I'm going to do the restore again. And I'm going to do the um, one right here, the one backup that we created. And you can see that the GitHub came back, the Proxmox came back, and we still have the Big Protect World right here. So you can see the backup is completely working, and you can go back in time if you want to by just picking which one you want. It does order it by the latest. So the one is always going to be the latest one and the bottom one's always going to be the oldest. So now you can take backups and uh, restore them uh, anytime you want. So that's my solution on how to back up Uptime Kuma and makes it to where you can go back in the past, go forward. When you update Kuma or anything like that, you can easily back it up and or restore it in time. So, um, so I'm going to open towards it, be down in the description and uh, on GitHub. So it, if you have any problems with it, just start an issue or you can also uh, join the Big Bear community and uh, give me feedback. And uh, if you have any problems with it, you can set, say it in there. So, uh, so if you like my videos, subscribe, comment, like, and stay tuned for more videos.